How are you doing? This is Martin here from Soul Trail, and once again, more boots. <laughs> it just shows how many pairs of boots I actually have. But these are my winter boots because I'm getting winter ready now for some good cold mountain hikes and camps. So these are the Hanwag Nazcat GTX boots. I love the look of them. I absolutely love the look of them. Um, and there's a bit of a history, I suppose, with why I went with these. Because you'll always remember your first pair of boots that you've ever bought. Um, I've always, like, at the start when you go hiking, you'll be buying cheaper pairs of boots. But the first pair of expensive boots that you buy, you will always remember. And a lot of the technology in the first pair of boots I bought stuck with me. And that's why I went for these. So I'll show you my first pair. So these were my first pair of expensive boots I bought. They were about 200 euros at the time, which is a long time ago. Um, they're well worn out at the moment. They're high tech. I don't know the brand, or sorry, I don't know the model, but they don't have Gore-Tex either. They have their own waterproof membrane. They have a ball bearing system on them, which I loved. It was my, it was my first time seeing that. They had very high scuff around the sides, which I loved. And they're a good solid leather boot with with um with very good support. And the soles are nearly worn out. But I will say these are resolable. But I didn't go down that route because they were they started to leak. So and if you look, a lot of the traits that are in this that I loved are actually in these. With the scuff, with the ball bearing lace system. They're a higher boot though. Are higher around your ankle which I like anyway let's weigh them up let's weigh them compared to my first ever pair of boots because I always consider these a very heavy boot maybe I wasn't used to hiking but let's weigh them so the high tech are coming in at 865 versus the handwag are coming in at 820 not a lot of difference there so let's have a look at some of the features so I love the color so it's beautiful, strong, new buck leather. And it's nearly a full wrap. As in, it comes underneath and then up like this and then the sole is attached to it. A uh, bit of stitching in the back for extra support. It has a Gore-Tex membrane in the inside. So very, very waterproof. The beautiful scuff that's all the way around the edges. I love that and as I said and if you've seen my previous videos I always try to go for boots with scuff it'll protect your boot and your boots are gonna last a lot bloody longer so that um, one thing I adore ball bearing lace up system it's incredible because what happens is when you pull laces the laces travel on each of the ball bearings when you pull up and it all moves in together around your foot which I love I love that because you can really get a good secure fit to your boot. The one thing I'll say about that though, when you tighten these up, you have a lock system here. So tighten them up, lock them, but then I always use my different kinds of lacing systems like the surgeon's knot or something like that, that I do to help heel slip and stuff. So it's a quite a high boot, so very, very good ankle support at the very, very top. My favorite, it has Vibram soles. And these soles look incredible, which it has an unbelievable shark fin uh, grip in the front. I always look for that in boots because the shark fin, that's the main part when you're going uphill, you're, the top of your toes gripping into the mud and gripping into the mountain. So I love Vibram soles, but not only do they have the shark fin in the front, they also have the shark fin in the back. So that's for going downhill. It'll grip right into the mud. So I'm really looking forward to trying these out. I love Vibram soles anyway. The midsole has a shock absorbing technology in it. It also has a wedge inside in the sole from stopping it from moving. It's very stiff. So if you stood on a rock right in the edge, you'll definitely be supported. You're not going to be hurting your foot that way. So under your laces, you have mesh instead of your leather. A lot of other boots have very, very light, flexible leather here instead of mesh, but I don't mind the mesh at all. I'm just wondering if you had gaiters on, would it affect 
this. That's something that I'll look out for in time. Um, and probably using mesh anyway is going to lessen the weight um, versus a leather. So the insole. It looks wafer thin. And I'm not sure how much support it's going to offer. But for me, I always swap these out anyway for ones that I know work for me. And I'd advise you do the very same. I'd even, I'd even advise you to do it in a, a boots that you actually own right now is to swap out for different insoles. Try get ones that suit you. I have, a, I have a pair in every single one of my boots. I am going to be making a video on uh, foot care on the trail and what to do to prevent a lot of stuff. So it'll be in that. So watch out for that. So that's there. So yeah. This is obviously, I'm not going to go through pros and cons because I haven't worn these yet. Um, but I'm going to be breaking them in soon and these are going to be hammering the hills during the winter and for many, many years to come. And they are resolable. So if I keep them in good enough condition, I am going to look into getting them resold in time. They're actually crampon compatible as well. So if you're ever uh, going up icy mountains and you wanted to use crampons they are compatible with crampons so look that was just a quick look at the Hanwag Nazcat um, GTX boots well, let me hit the trail with them and I'm gonna come back with a video of what I've learned about these boots but for now happy hiking talk to you again bye